Okie dokie. So, this is where we were. Okay, with all the Russia stuff. And then, we need to take a little bit of a detour in the fighting and stuff to deal with the Holocaust. Yeah, we do. Um, somebody every year is like, oh, Miss, we always learn about the good. You need to know what happens when you let a little bit of hate get big. Okay. Please remember the purpose of Adolf Hitler's whatever in World War II isn't just to kill Jews. His purpose is to create an all German empire that will stretch all the way uh, across Russia. Okay. The way he's going to go about it is getting rid of everybody that isn't German. So he starts with the Nuremberg laws. Okay. Um, because the Jews are the biggest like non-German group in Germany. He starts with the Nuremberg laws and he's like, well, hopefully if I limit their rights, they'll leave. They'll get out of here. I mean, some leave. Then we have Kristallnacht. Remember Kristallnacht here? Night of broken glass. That's where they went and like torched some buildings and like um, threw rocks into buildings and like looted things and stuff like that. And honestly, after Kristallnacht in 1938, a lot of Jews are like, okay, we're out. Unfortunately, a vast majority of the people that leave Germany, they're just going to go to neighboring countries. They're going to go to Poland or they're going to go to the Netherlands. Um, you read the diary of Anne Frank. Well, she was in the Netherlands. Oh, she was in the Netherlands. Okay. So they're just going to go to neighboring countries and still be taken because they're now in Nazi Germany. Okay. Um, we do know that Hitler always planned the camps to be his final solution. Um, uh, and by the way, we know that because of his book, Mein Kampf. And we know that because immediately in 1933, he starts building some of the camps and calling them prisons, remember? And they did. At first, they were prisons where you took actual criminals. But fairly quickly, I would think for sure within five years, five years would be 38. Yeah, they're going to start like rounding up non-Germans and putting them in there. Um, but we also know he uses ghettos next. Now, guys, typically when we over here in America think about ghettos, we think of like inner city, um, poor area, uh, crime ridden, buildings falling down, stuff like that. Okay. That's not exactly what these ghettos are. They are parts of town that were physically separated away from the rest of town. Um, it might be separated by barbed wire or by an actual wall. Okay, the one of the worst ones was um, Warsaw, uh, Poland. You'll see some pictures. Um, but it, 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 it wasn't like always a wall. It could have just been like, a, uh, what, am I think, what am I trying to get at? Like a, like a chain link fence, like a see-through, you can see through it type fence. It's not always just a wall, okay? But they're areas that are separated off from the rest of the land. The idea with the ghetto, get all the non-Germans in there and slowly, you don't do it all at once, slowly stop sending running water into the ghetto. You stop letting um, deliveries be made to the ghetto. So like farmers and stuff can't take new stuff into the ghetto. Um, you stop allowing workers to go into the ghetto and fix broken stuff. You stop sending garbage collectors into the ghetto. You stop <clears throat> collecting dead bodies or you stop sending doctors to the ghetto. And that way, everybody in the ghetto will just die naturally. Yeah, that's not called natural, that's murder. But that's the idea, okay? I have been to the Jewish ghetto in Prague, okay, uh, in the Czech Republic. 
And it was kind of weird because we were in like the old town, Prague old town. And we were just looking around, right? These are some of the pictures of Prague old town. Oh, that's the floor, the ground. I love roads that are like that. I was just taking pictures and we were looking for the ghetto. Like we wanted to go to the Jewish cemetery and go like and see things, right? So we have the map and we're following it. Cool, yeah? Look at all these pictures of Prague. We didn't even realize when we were in the ghetto, which is weird. There's my mommy right there. It looks nice. I mean, this isn't the ghetto. This is Prague. And then look. Do you see that? Star digging. We were like, oh, because we kept looking at the map and we were like, this should be the ghetto, but like, it doesn't look any different. It looks normal. Finding the little like the, the graveyard and I want you to see some of that too. Finding the Jewish cemetery, we were like, where is this thing? Like you would think that we'd be able to find the Jewish ghetto, easy. All of these pictures are Prague, if you're looking. I know I'm going fast, but this is all Prague. Prague is where I showed you pictures of the communist block, the communist buildings also. This is the, um, right here, the old Jewish cemetery and I don't know how you say that, dates back to the 1400s. And I actually saw some of these were like from the 1600s. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, let's see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here it is. It's on the Jewish quarter of Prague. So like that's where the ghetto was. They just like took this area of Prague that wasn't a great area back then and said, OK, this is where all the Jews and non-Germans have to go. And that became the Jewish ghetto. And then there wasn't room. So they just started like stacking the dead on top. And this is actually like this graveyard cemetery or whatever is actually like this big hill because they just kept burying bodies on top. It was just wonderful. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So cool. Um, but my, my point is today, most of these ghettos are just parts of the cities. Like you don't even really notice a difference. We really didn't, we couldn't find it. It took us forever because we really didn't notice a difference in the city. We just suddenly were, oh, we're in Jewish town or whatever it was called. Old Jewish town, I think. So that's kind of the idea. We'll just starve them out, we'll let them die naturally. When you cut off supplies, that is not natural death. Unfortunately, from Hitler's point of view, that just was not happening fast enough. Man. So he goes into what he calls his final solution to the Jewish problem, the camp system. Now, guys, there's actually two different types of camps. People tend to lump them all together and call them all concentration camps, but they are not. There's actually two different types. You have concentration or work camps, and then you have extermination or death camps. Okay, uh, you die at both. But the purpose of an extermination camp is to systematically murder people, get rid of as many of them as possible. The purpose of a concentration camp, it's also called a work camp for a reason. The purpose is to concentrate people, to keep them and force them to work until there's room at an extermination camp where you then send them later. Okay, um, a lot of people that were sent to camps, most of the time they didn't just stay in one camp. Okay, whenever a camp would be 
liquidated and everybody would be sent from one camp to another, typically they were being sent from um, a work camp to an extermination camp. Not always. If you were lucky, you were sent, oh, I say that like lucky, really? But if you were lucky, you were sent from one work camp to another. That wasn't, you know, usually the case. Okay. I got a lot of pictures. And I have been to a camp called, you don't have to write it down, just so you know what it looks like, Dachau. People here always say Dachau, Dachau, okay? Um, Dachau is outside of Munich, kind of Munich, um, so it's like in Bavaria, southern Germany. Okay, a little disclaimer. You guys, I went to Dachau when I was 18 on a choir trip. Um, I had no idea that the pictures I took there, I would be showing 20 years later as a teacher. So like this one's crooked, or this way to you, I guess. Um, it's crooked. I know, I'm sorry. Just go with it. Okay. okay, so this right here is a monument at Dachau, okay? Dachau was the very first camp built. Um, it, was, it was used as a prison first, and then, of course, a camp later. It is a concentration camp. It's not until the end of the war. Um, I think I think it was like, like 1944 or something that Hitler turned every concentration camp into an extermination camp because it wasn't happening fast enough and he knew he was losing the war anyway. Okay, so this right here is a monument. Um, it th This right here, this sculpture didn't exist back then. It's there now to remember the dead. And what you're seeing is just a mangled mass of bodies. You see feet, hands, heads, okay? And look at the overcast, by the way. Y'all, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, what's the word? Um, edit these pictures. I mean, first of all, they're just, you know, from 1996. But the day that we went to Dachau, it was really weird. And it was like, it looked like this. It was just kind of a solemn day in Germany. It was just strange. This is actually, this is actually the first um, view that I had of Dachau. We parked kind of far away and then we had to walk through like, you know, trees and this beautiful path. I mean, it's not like the camps are, you know, on the main road saying, hey, welcome. Mm -mm. So we had to like through, walk through all these trees. Um, and this is the first view that I had of it. We came out of the trees and I was like, oh, shoot. Um, yes, you see electrified barbed wire. It's not electric today, um, but I mean, it's still kept that way so that you can see it. This building that you're seeing right here, um, most of the buildings at Dachau were burned because um, typhoid fever disease was so bad that when we, and it was us, the Americans that liberated Dachau, whenever we liberated it, we were like, how do we clean this? So most of the buildings were burned. I think there's three left. This was the cleanest one because it was the SS barrack. It's where the Nazis stayed. So it was clean. The others were not clean at all. Today, this barrack is a museum. Okay. Um, and then of course, like you can see, the building is just very plain. And please ignore all of our maroon Lee jackets. I'm sorry, I can't help where my parents lived and where I went to school. This right here is another memorial that wasn't actually there back then. Um, it's just a memorial right here. And here in several different languages, it says, Ni wieder. Ni never. Wieder again. Ni wieder. Never again. This right here is the camp. Today, you're like, oh, it's a bunch of nothing. But back then, 
Do you see this clearing right here? There would have been a building there, a barrack, but they burned it, again, because of disease. If we go in a little bit closer, you can see another line right here where another barrack was and all the way back. And this barrack back here, see it, is the one that you'll see close up in a minute. Um, this is for people to see what it was like. The main like road comes down this way. You can see some of those choir kids walking. And then like you have this, all of this right here on one side. On the other side of that road where everybody is, it looks the exact same as this. So you have another barrack over here way back in the back and then you have all of this that is burned, okay? This is up close, and again, I'm sorry, it's crooked. I wasn't a photographer at 18, but this right here is up close showing you that barrack that wasn't burned, okay? Very simple, very plain. And this is inside. You have bunk beds, three high. You have some benches, and that's it. Um, our tour guide was telling us that, you know, every camp is different, okay? But he was telling us that these beds are five feet long. So from here to here, it's only five feet. Guys, I am five foot tall. I'm a hobbit. And you guys have stood up against me. And you're always like this. Mitch, you're so short. Most of you couldn't lay flat in these beds. He also said quite often, you would have two people to a bed. This is the bathroom, the sinks. Um, I hate to say this, but it's true. They're kind of like our sinks and our bathrooms where you just stick your hand under and it just comes out. Okay, there's not like a, anything. You just stick your hand under and it comes out. Way back in the back, but it's too dark, you can't see, but way back in the back, there was a toilet. It's just a thing you sit on. It's nothing exciting. Um, I love this picture. I include this picture because um, you can see the main road, okay, and on one side is all that burn stuff and the barrack, and then on the other side is all that burn stuff and the barrack, okay? This right here is um, a Catholic memorial. This right here, I think it's the Protestant memorial, and then over here on this side behind these trees is a Jewish memorial. So they weren't, they weren't there back then, they're there now, today, to like pay your respects or whatever. Um, but that's not why I love this picture. We were a bunch of teenagers when we went and there were, I don't know, 300 or whatever of us. And we were teenagers. Think about how y'all act in the hall. You're not bad, but you're loud and you're like, hey, and you like hug each other and right. And so were we. But look at how my friends are walking by herself, by himself, by himself. I love how Kim looks right here. She's like by herself, by himself. They're together. But it was like, like you felt, I don't know how to explain it. When we got to Dachau, you felt that what happened there was big. You could feel it. And I remember this walk. We were actually on our way to the crematorium. Um, that's where you burn the bodies. And I remember this walk like it was yesterday. Because as we were walking, I was looking down at the ground. I wasn't walking with anybody either. But I looked down at the ground and I thought, somebody was beaten right there. And I'd walk a little bit. Somebody was spit on right here and I'd walk a little bit. Somebody was murdered right here. Somebody was raped right here. Somebody was whatever right here. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, this is real. This isn't some historical story. I just remember that walk being like so powerful. This right here is the crematorium. 
Dachau is not, was not, whatever, an extermination camp. It was a concentration camp. It's a work camp. Um, people farm, people make weapons and stuff like that. Um, they only had four, four ovens for the bodies. Uh, extermination camps had a lot more, um, in some cases like hundreds, okay? But Dachau only had four, and this is, this is two of them. Um, right next to this, uh, in fact, to the right of this, it's the exact same. A body could go in there and you'd shut the door and burn it. A body would go in there and you'd shut the door and burn it. This room right here, it says at the top, Herr Verden have lange gehängt. Um, this was the hanging room. Uh, here were people hanged. Right here. You see it in English. Um, the hanging room. They would basically hang you from these things and kill you. In the, um, the museum part, the SS barracks, the walls were giant pictures, like the entire wall, like this picture right here, I took a picture of the wall, okay? And this just kind of, this gives you a, a menu of what they ate, what they, what they fed the prisoners. You're starving them. Um, in the mornings, afternoons, evenings, basically breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, so in the morning, you got 350 grams, I don't know how much that is, probably a piece, but I don't know, uh, of bread as your daily ration. And then you get a type of coffee. Lunch, um, six times a week. You get a little bit of crap. I forgot what blueberry is. I don't remember. Dang, I'm gonna have to look it up on my phone. But anyway, um, you get a type of soup, vice cool soup. Let me go to my translation. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Every German speaker on here is like, hello. Well, hello. I'm not a natural German speaker. Turnips. There we go. Um, so yeah, vegetables, some turnips. Or uh, Weiss Kohl Suppe. Uh, Weiss is white. So that's like um, broth. Okay. And then right here, one time a week, you would have noodle soup. Um, evening, uh, dinner, four times a week, 20 to 30 grams of sausage. Now this word's important, odor. That means or. Odor does not mean and. Odor means or. So sausage or cheese. Are they gonna give the prisoners a lot of sausage? That's probably gonna be for the SS soldiers. Um, and then a oh, whatever liter of tea. And then here, three times a week, um, you get one liter of soup, probably whatever soup is left over. This right here was, again, another picture um, on the whole wall. And because I had gone to Dachau, when I was in college and I took my, um, like my World War II, Nazi Germany, whatever class it was called, um, I did a research paper on Dachau because I'd been there. It was important to me to do it that way. And so um, we, I, I read a book and it was from one of the doctors who liberated Dachau, one of the, our U.S. doctors who had been sent there. And this was actually a picture from him. Um, he opened these two double doors and all these bodies just came out. You don't, you don't treat human beings that way. I don't care if they're dead. I believe the body is just a shell also. But you still don't treat them that way. It's just, ugh. Um, This picture right here, that's our tour guide. 
Alex. Um, but this right here in the background, again, I took a picture of the wall, so I'm sorry about the flash. Um, you see a Nazi soldier right here kicking some guy, but I really want to, um, I want you to look in the background. Because I didn't really even understand when I took this picture what I had taken in the background. I was taking a picture of the Nazi kicking that guy. But look. This right here is actually an old um, form of torture, like a medieval form of torture, where um, you take the arms and you pull them back. Look, my arms don't go back. Look, his arms are like meeting back here. That's not supposed to happen. You pull them out of socket or worse, and you hang them that way. I can't, I can't change it. I can't change the picture. Okay, let's see this. Okay, I think this takes us to Treblinka, yeah. Um, the, uh, these are some pictures of extermination camps. Um, some of the worst extermination camps were in Poland um, because there were more Jews and non-Germans there than, of course, in Germany. Sorry. So one of the bad ones was called Treblinka. Treblinka is what you typically hear it said here. Um, this right here is the railway station to get there. And that's the thing too. There's nothing there anymore. treblinka has gone. There is a memorial. Um, you could go, all these rocks represent dead. Look at all these rocks. Look at that. And why did those people die? What did they do? almost 2 million. The plan was to murder almost 2 million. So I don't know exactly how many deaths are attributed to, to Treblinka. Two million. It's just crazy. I can't move it again, you guys. This one is the most famous of all of the um, extermination camps. Auschwitz. It's not Auschwitz. Auschwitz. Um, Auschwitz is the extermination camp that has the most, most deaths attributed to it. Um, sadly, though, whenever they would like bring the prisoners to the gates, you saw this famous saying. Arbeit macht frei. Work to make free. Work will set you free. People thought that they were being sent maybe from one work camp to another work camp, but they weren't. Um, this is where um, 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 Anne Frank died, it was Auschwitz, okay? Um, it was just systematic extermination. You would get off like the the train like you would get there and they would divide you up old people young people men women whatever 
the strongest looking people would be kept at Auschwitz to work. I mean, if you were lucky, you survived Auschwitz because of course they still need people to farm and stuff. Um, but most people were separated. Um, typically the old people were, ta were taken straight to the showers, you know the story, um, and they were gassed right there. Then once all those bodies were dealt with, the next group would be sent in and they would, I mean, it was just, it's just systematic, it's just murder. Oh my gosh, why can't I move these pictures? Here we go. Um, this is what Auschwitz looks like today. You can go visit. Um, a lot of people go visit. It's it's just like Dachau, like a like a historical thing, but also, you know, a memorial. This is what it looks like. All these barracks. This right here shows you the barbed wire and the watch, the watchtowers. These are real people. Like it makes me want to cry. Real people who really suffered. And why? Real people. Um, it was not us, the Americans who lib liberated Auschwitz. It was the Russians. Um, so these pictures were taken by the Russians and the Russians were horrified guys when they saw, I mean, we were horrified by Dachau and Dachau was not an extermination camp. So think about that. If there were 2 million or whatever at Treblinka, how many at Auschwitz? The wrong. Okay, so I need to look up how many died at Treblinka because I think it was just planned. Guys, a million people, y'all. It's just crazy. I don't know how many people actually. Oh, wait. It's estimated that 700,000 to 900,000 died at Treblinka. So, um,. Pretty close. These are liberation pictures, um, pictures that you know the Russians took when they were liberated. So are these. These are pictures that Russia Russians took of the crematorium. These are the furnaces. That's the remains of somebody's body. Again, it makes me want to cry. These are the remains of people's bodies. This is um, someone who has died, who's about to go into um, a furnace. And quite often you had prisoners who worked there who had to be the ones to do it. Um, I always have kids that are like, I wouldn't have done it. Well, then you would have been sitting right here. Oh, bye, be careful. You would have been sitting right here. So you would have done it. These are a whole bunch of shoes um, that they found. Uh, the Nazis, before they would like burn you or whatever, um, they would strip you and they would keep your stuff to reuse, okay? Um, look at this pile of shoes. If you think that every two shoes there represents a human being, it makes me wanna cry. That number is just crazy. Hold on. Babies, I'm in here. My dad just left and the dogs are like, Freya. These right here are rings. Hey, baby girl. These are rings um, that the Nazis, again, would take from you. Um, typically, I mean, they didn't wear jewelry like we do today. Um, so typically, if we just think, okay, each ring belongs to somebody. Think about how many people. Glasses. They can reuse all of this glass. They can reuse everything. Teeth.
Auschwitz couldn't burn enough bodies fast enough. Um, they couldn't keep up. So there were, and it wasn't just at Auschwitz, it was at other places too, but there were mass graves. Um, what you're seeing here is just a big hole in the ground where you just have bodies. Um, this guy has been recently dropped in there. He's bloated. Whenever you die, gases build up in you. That's why he looks like that. He's bloated from the gases and stuff. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, roughly six million-ish people are going to die in the camps. Okay. That's a huge number. Like I can't, I'm not good with numbers anyway. So, I mean, I can't fathom 6 million people. I don't know what that looks like. Do you know what that looks like? Um, Sophie's just staring at me. Like, I just can't imagine. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I do, it's hate. Just don't get it. I just don't get it. Crazy, crazy, sad, sad, kind of pathetic, real pathetic, just sad. And how about Nivider? Never again.